John Kerry, the former Secretary of State under Barack Obama and currently the green transition czar of the US, the envoy who travels around and sells the idea of like a green transition towards a green economy. He's been doing that now for many, many years said something incredibly dumb the other day that really needs to be pointed out because it shows the mindset of these people that claim knowing the absolute truth and the whole truth and what's good for the people and how the mindset of the Democratic Party and Democratic Party operatives uh, is shifting really toward, toward, a, toward control of people's beliefs and away from trying to represent their needs. And this, don't get me wrong, there are enough Republicans uh, who, who, whose, men, whose mental processes go in a similar way. This is by no way constrained to the, to the Democrats alone, but it is very revealing that it is the Democratic Party in the United States that is going down this route. So uh, last week, John Kerry took part in a panel on climate change, on his regular spiel that he does, he uh, he sat there in this panel with um, of the World Economic Forum, of course. I mean, this huge, big money organization that <laughs> of Klaus Schwab, of <laughs> the man who wants to change humanity. Um, it was it was chaired by the president of the World Economic Forum. Um, uh, then, then John Kerry, special presidential envoy for uh, envoy for climate. Um, this person here, Lawrence uh, Tubiana, chief executive officer of, of the European Climate Foundation, and uh, Catherine Feingold, um, and they were having a chat. It was mo it was mostly Kerry talking, and then we got to the Q and A, and um, John Kerry. And please, please um, notice the way that he tries to mince his words. It was he was asked about. Uh, social media and misinformation and he even managed to bring up the First Amendment and I don't know why he would have done that but he did it and please watch and then we'll discuss. Could perhaps Secretary uh, Kerry and the panelists could expand on the role of tackling climate misinformation on the solutions in the marketplace because that seems to me that it's rife out there both from business investment and consumer. It's, it's so tough. Everybody's wrestling with that right now. Um, and I think the, the dislike of and anguish over social media is just growing and growing and growing. Uh, and it's part of our problem, particularly in democracies, uh, in terms of building consensus around any issue. It's really hard to govern today. You can't, you know, you know, there's no, the referees we used to have to determine what's a fact and what isn't a fact have kind of, you know, been eviscerated to a certain degree. And um, people go and that people self-select where they go for their news or for their information. And then you just get into a vicious cycle. So it's really, really hard, much harder to build consensus today than at any time in the 45, 50 years I've been involved in this. And, and. Uh, you know, there's a lot of discussion now about how you curb uh, those entities uh, in order to guarantee that you're going to have, you know, some accountability on facts, et cetera. But look, if people go to only one source and the source they go to is sick and, uh, you know, has an agenda and they're putting out disinformation, uh, our First Amendment stands as a major block to the ability to be able to just, you know, hammer it out of existence. So what you need, what we need is to, is to win the ground, win the right to govern by hopefully having, uh, you know, winning enough votes that you're free to be able to, to uh, implement change. Uh, now, obviously there are some people in our country who are prepared to implement change in other ways. And so that's you're really questioning dangerous. really mm -hmm. if uh, democracy can survive unregulated I think social I think, media. I think democracies are, de are very challenged right now and have not proven they can move fast enough or big enough to deal with the challenges that we are facing. And to me, that is part of what this race, uh, this, this election is all about. Will we break the fever in the United States? Will we break it up? 
and then he goes uh, more into a uh, party campaign mode than anything else. But isn't it isn't it absolutely revealing how these people think about the freedom of information and, and how they also think about the gullibility and stupidity of the general masses, how they distrust these masses. I mean, this is this is this is absolutely fantastic. I think he's honest. He's honest, speaking his mind on how he thinks that it used to be easier when we just had the big newspapers and we knew how to feed correct information into the news uh, into the news media and and thereby get out the narratives that we want to, that we want to be believed. And now and now we have this problem that on platforms like YouTube, on Twitter, and uh, um, all the other ones and TikTok and so on, you have different kinds of narratives and you have different um, a, a different offer. You have people who can sit somewhere in an office uh, in, in Kyoto and talk directly to, an, to a relative uh, audience and show them words and show them stuff and even take time to discuss among each other um, on a large scale what should be believed and what not. And the first amendment of the United States, for all my criticism that I give to, toward the, the, the USA, the first amendment is a fantastic and phenomenal achievement and something that the USA should never ever even think about giving up, up or curbing down because it is, it is actually a very principled and good idea to let people speak freely and actually um, have these ideas contest for themselves. And, you know, the you can think about the need for a green transition and the need to battle climate change, whatever you want. You can stand on this side or on the other side. The important thing is that we are able to discuss it out and this and and going and using the argument that you must just be able to silence certain information that you don't like and then all will be fine that is a pathway to a very dark place and he i think he realized it at some point when he right after he brought up the first amendment that he went into a place where he can not possibly win um win the favors of the of the people of the people listening to him or that there is a fundamental problem between the First Amendment and his vision of how people should be governed top down with information fed by those who understand better. But you know, it feeds, this feeds straight into this narrative about um, populism and how um, good poli policy making and good politics is the art of um, keeping, keeping information that you don't like and keeping narratives that you disapprove of um, so small that they are um, politically insignificant. So this, this, this change is, is quite dramatic. I, I'm not entirely sure whether people in the past, but like if we go a hundred, a hundred years back and we look at the democratic process in the US or in, in European countries, whether whether the mindset was any better, I've never lived in the, through those days, but it strikes me as paradigmatic of our moment here that we now um, have, that it's now okay for people who claim that they are good Democrats and that they're standing up for democratic values, that they at the same time also um, feel emboldened to say that um, that the freedom freedom of speech and freedom of of a contest of ideas is a bad thing and that this needs to be fought against because only the good narratives are allowed to to circulate and these people of I, I really wonder how they would react if they were confronted with these issues of um, false narratives and lies outright lies being being propagated in in great big, big media outlets in the trusted media outlets hunter biden laptop the 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 Russia Gate, um, <laughs> Gulf of Tonkin incident, weapons of mass destruction. I mean, the, the I I really wonder how he would how how he would react to that. The only reaction probably is by immediately going into something else and go into counter accusation. 
because the one thing that we can say with absolute certainty is that fails narratives, outright lies, are not circulating only since the emergence of social media. They've been, they've been circulating and they've been uh, uh, groomed and fostered um, from way, way, way before. The big difference is now that, there's, that, there are, um, that there are technological tools available for little guys and little girls like you and I to actually also participate in mass broadcasting of, um, of information. And that's something <laughs> the entrenched power structures don't like. And this is fascinating that this mindset. At, if you have time, go and watch the, um, the, the 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 full the full thing on the World Economic Forum. It's it's right there. Um, the the mindset, of course, of um, having the right solutions and um, just having to bring them to everybody and have make everybody understand what the good thing is. And if they don't understand it, they're too dumb. So the question is one of education. It's not a question of debate of whether or not. It's how to do it. And the World Economic Forum people here, all of them, they seem they seem so sure of themselves, so utterly sure that they don't, of course, they don't contemplate discussing their ideas. They, can't, they think about how to impose them and um, how to battle uh, narratives that they don't like. Very revealing to me, very worrisome. Um, I do hope the First Amendment in the USA stands strong. To all my um, friends, and colleagues in, in the US, don't give that one up. That's a really, really good part of your constitution. Love that one. Good night.